Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year to your friend next to you. Tell Happy New Year. Come on. <laughs> I know that this is a very cold morning. Um, I, you know, I, we struggle getting out of bed, and it uh, seems like a lot of people are struggling there, too, uh, getting out of bed. Um, so let's see. Where is my clicker? Do I have my clicker also there? All right. So you see that uh, the picture that I put out on the screen uh, is someone who is ready to fight. In fact, <laughs> it says, getting ready for the struggle. Getting ready for the struggle. And uh, I realized as I prepared this message, the message of struggle usually are not too exciting <laughs> when we face a new year. Struggles, right? Um, and uh, this is a new year, and usually, you know, people give out the message of joy, happiness, and hope, and yet, here I am talking about the struggle. And, but don't worry, uh, it'll, it'll get better from here. <laughs> okay, so after two years of COVID pandemic, you know, I wish I can tell you today that everything is okay, now you can relax a bit, you can just uh, enjoy life, you know, everything is good, uh, economy is good, life is good, you can go anywhere you want taking vacation. I wish I could say that, but the reality is that humanity are still struggling with this virus. And um, in the next uh, few weeks, I just want to ask you to be patient about our, our life. Okay, they predicted the breakdown of our society as we know it because too many people will get sick. So you need to be very patient, you know, when you go to the restaurant, when you try to uh, go to the bank or, or do the thing that you usually do. Okay, be patient. Uh, you, know, uh, you know that uh, a lot of people are not there to serve us um, because they are sick. Right now, um, they already say 20% of the medical professional are not there uh, because they are home, quarantining. Um, so we are still in struggle, and, um, and these two years, these two years, we have seen that our world is in struggle. You, you would agree with me when you see this picture, right? A lot of struggles in many different areas, you know, from the political struggle, you know, dumb, uh, dumb, <laughs> Trump, <laughs> Trump versus the, the Biden or Republican, Democratic, and pro and anti-vaccine, and, and then what else? Um, uh, the, the BLM and the CRT, if you don't know that, that's, that's okay, you know, um, because some of this conflict may or may not affect you, right? But you can see, now, uh, if you read the news, we are in the battle of uh, the abortion, Roe versus Wade. That's coming also in the next few months. Um, so, and then lately, your life in the Bay Area has not been too peaceful, especially if you want to go to San Francisco and even some busy areas. What, smash and? Smash and grab, right? You heard that, right? And it's, it's going very crazy that now some people just open up their trunk when they lift, the, they park their car, just to make sure that it's empty, right? It's how bad it gets into. So a lot of struggle, as I said, some of this may affect you, some of them may not affect you. You may not be aware of this, some of the conflict, you know, about the def, def, about defund, the, the defund the police and all that kind of, you may not know all that, but there is one struggle, one struggle that you need to know one struggle that you need to be prepared for, one struggle that you have, whether you, you like it or you don't, you will be in there. There's one struggle, okay? But before that, let's talk about struggle. What is struggle? Okay, what is struggle? Um, let's see. Oh, by the way, before I, you get too depressed about the message of struggle, I want to read you the Deuteronomy chapter uh, 20 verse 4, for the Lord your God is the one who are with you. It says, the Lord your God is the one who are with you. 
goes with you to fight for you against your enemy to give you victory. So before you get too depressed, oh, so much uh, struggle, too many difficult things, I tell you that at the end of all this, you are victorious. How many can say amen to that? Amen? You are victorious because you have Jesus. Yes, we have to go to trouble and struggle, but God is the one that is goes out for you, with you, to fight for you against your enemies, to give you what? Victory. So victory, right? So struggle. Is, let, me, let me just ask you this question. Is struggle good or bad? Struggle good or bad? Bad? Well, it depends. Right? If you are the victim of the struggle, that's bad. But if you are a victor, then it's good. In fact, there is no victory without struggle. Think about it. There is no victory without struggle. What is struggle? The New Testament Bible, which is written in Greek, said struggle, the word for struggle is pale. pale. And what it means is to, uh, it's a two uh, a wrestling contest between the two in which one try to shake and push the other out of the arena. The shaking and pushing, wrestling, shaking, right? Struggle is the shaking. What, has, what is being shaken? There's one thing that you and I are engaged, as I said, there is one conflict that you need to know, even if you are not involved in the other conflict, like BLM, CRT, whatever it is, which I think you do, but just in case you are not, there's one conflict that you must know, and the Bible tells us this, Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6 says this. For our struggle, right, it, it doesn't say, if you have a struggle, maybe you have a struggle, and this struggle is, it just say, for our struggle, which means, there is a struggle, and you are in struggle, and your struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. Put on the armor of God. So the conflict you see here is, is not between the human and the virus, although that's one of the struggles that we're facing right now. It's not even human to human, like we are fighting whatever uh, people that are anti our, our uh, view, political view or whatever view it is. It's not even human to human. The Bible is saying the conflict happened between you, the believers, it's not even between unbeliever to something, but it is believer against spiritual forces. This is the struggle that every sincere Christian will, be, will have to face, if not already in it, whether you like it or you don't. If you believe in Jesus, you are in this struggle. You are struggling against the spiritual forces in the heavenly realm. There is a wrestling, wrestling match happening in our life. The spiritual dark forces is trying to shake you, wrestle with you, to throw you out from the arena. They want to determine how you live your life. They influence the decision that you make. And if possible, if possible, they want to shake your faith in Jesus. Their end goal is this to lead you in its way far away from God's wonderful plan for your life. Their goal is this. If you want to call yourself Christian, it's fine. Have the Christianity without God, without Jesus. They, their goal is religion without God. Religion without loyalty to real God. That's their goal. You may still go to church and do your Christian thing, but it is possible because you are unaware of this struggle, you live your life in the defeated mode. You can have your religion, but a religion without power, religion without Jesus, religion without loyalty. The struggle 
In fact, it's very Christian. Because non-Christian do not struggle against the spiritual forces. They are on their side. We, Christian, is on God's side. We struggle against the evil forces. On December 7th, 1941, how many know what happened? December 7, 1941. Correct. Pearl Harbor. At that time, conflict were already happening in Europe. I think Germany and Italy already exp- do the expansion. In Asia, the Japan, the, the imperial Japanese, they are already in, ex- were already expanding in China. Okay? If you heard Nanjing, Nanking, the rape of Nanking, that's around the time. Okay? Everybody at war, but America at that time with Russia was already one of the superpower out of World War I, okay? Very prosperous. And America is very localized here, very far from the conflict. America is one continent. In order from Europe to, anybody from Europe to go to America, they have to cross Atlantic Ocean. It's too far. So America f- felt very safe, right? If, you, if Japan want to come to America, they have to go through Pacific Ocean, very far. So America was prosperous, powerful, far from conflict, and America felt very safe, all right? But the Japanese army wanted to attack Malaysia and Indonesia and Singapore. And they knew America is going to prevent them or interfere with their plan. So what the Japanese did, and all this actually, the America already feel that the Japanese want to do something, but they felt too safe, too strong, too far. So the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor in order to disable the U.S. Navy force. In how, if America was going to do something for Indonesia or, or Malaysia, it will be from that Pacific uh, force in Hawaii. That's the base. So Ameri- uh, Japan attacked the U.S. Navy forces in Hawaii. All of a sudden, it's a day like this, December 7, nice 73 degree, you're sunny in Hawaii, everybody was feeling happy. 7.58 a.m., Japanese army attacked the U.S. Uh, Navy forces in, um, in uh, Hawaii. 2,400 Navy people died, 2,400. Some of them actually st- was still there not too long ago, the, the, the corpse. That, they call it the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, something like that, in the USS Arizona. Four other, they, they destroyed eight vessels, 2,400 people more than that died, 1,700 um, wounded, okay? And so it disabled U.S. Navy for it. There was like a surprise attack. The U.S. did not know that it's coming. After defeating the U.S. forces in Hawaii, the Japan forces, the, the imperial forces, went ahead and conquered Indonesia and Malaysia and Singapore, those whole Southeast Asia. One of the most brutal occupation of Indonesia is by the Japanese army for three and a half years, from 1942 until 1945, when the U.S. soldiers, or U.S. army dropped the atomic bomb, right? You, you know your history. Why did the Japanese forces was able to attack the superpower like the U.S.? Because U.S. did not expect it. U.S. felt too safe. They were unaware that the Japanese are, that war actually was never announced. When nation wants to go to war, right, they have to make a war declaration. The Japanese uh, representative in the U.S. would already want to present a paper declaring war to the U.S. Congress, but the Japanese uh, army general said, no, let's attack without telling them that we are at war. So that Harbor Harbor was so famous, they call it the day of infamy. Infamy is like 
famous in the negative way, right? The day of infamy. And it draw the US into the World War II. So that's a little history, how a superpower was defeated because they were just totally unprepared and feeling too safe. I think that is a lesson for us Christian. We feel that, oh, God is so good, he's going to protect us, but you are unaware. The Bible says in Peter, 2 Peter says, your enemy, the devil, prowl around like the lion looking for those he can consume. If you are unaware, that is the, best, the, the worst thing that can happen. You know already that the devil is our enemy, yet we do not prepare, we do not engage with him. We live as if nothing can happen. The struggle, you have no choice. You are in it. We cannot play defense. We need to arm ourselves and start attacking it with the weapon that God has already prepared as far as these spiritual evil forces in the air. We need to engage. Engagement is stru in struggle is necessary for victory and success. So the question is, how do we engage as Christian? Do we then start shooting anybody? Well, you cannot shoot anybody because this is a spiritual forces. What do you have to do? Well, in the same verses, in the same chapter, Ephesians chapter 6, Paul continued. He had this in his mind, this, this warfare, when he wrote this, inspired by the Holy Spirit, when he wrote this Ephesians chapter 6, he has warfare in his mind. Battle. He's talking about putting on the armor so that we can stand our ground. So if you read the next three verses, he gave us the area where we need to engage. And that's what I'm going to share to you today. The first one is in verse 17. This is what he said. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now he's taking one, one thing, which is the sword. And what he's saying is he, he immediately tells us what he means. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. The word of God is the ultimate truth. Hallelujah, amen. We can find confidence that this is the greatest weapon that God has given to his people. Now, the problem is because we know the word, but we seldom use it. We seldom practice it. Okay? Um, let's see. I have a sword here. Okay, sword. Anybody know how to read Chinese? No way. Winarto, you know how to read? <laughs> I never know what this, this, this word is. Can you tell? What does that mean? I think it's the Tai Chi precious sword. Oh, Tai Chi precious sword. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, it, this is not, this is not uh, 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 in, um, this is not in a uh, uh, real, right? This is wood, wooden. But, um, how many think that if I, um, do, you, do you think I'm skillful in this Tai Chi sword? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have too much confidence on me, okay? All right, so, I, not me, Winarto. Huh? Can you come? <laughs> you, okay, Winarto, come. All right. All right, so you come, come. All okay. right. I'm going to throw this to the air. You have to hit it with that sword. You think you can do it? <laughs> no, I mean, like, yeah, this, uh, you know, uh, this is very light, so it's not going to hurt anybody. Yeah? So, so I'm going to go lampard like this, you know, you throw it out. You have to hit it, okay? Like you hit the baseball, right? Okay? Let's see if you can do it, okay? Yay. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to count, okay? One, two, three, and then you hit, okay? One, two, three. Ah, you, what, what is that? <laughs> okay. It's okay, it's okay. So he, he's, he's, he's very, very happy. Okay, thank you, Winardo. Yeah, give it, give it up for Winardo. Do you know why he cannot, he cannot handle the sword? He never practiced. 
He never practiced. Okay? And he broke it too. <laughs> right? You broke the word of God. Man, that is, uh, you know, really uh, disrespectful. No, just kidding. <laughs> okay. So the problem with us is we heard the word, we are familiar with the word, but we never use it. We never use the word as the attacking weapon. The Bible says that the, the word of God is like two edges sword. What it means is it can defeat the enemy. At the same time, it purify our heart. Two direction. The word of God purify our heart because it can separate between the soul and the spirit. It can make us honest about our intention and motivation. At the same time, it can defeat the work of the devil, like Jesus did in, after he, he fasted 40 days. And the, the devil come and, and try to tempt him with many things. Okay, he used the word of God to attack. You have the word of God. The problem is you never pick up your sword and use it to defeat the work of the devil. So I want to encourage you. One way to engage with the evil spirit is you pick up your sword, the word of God, and practice it. Say it out loud against any situation that you are facing in your life. If you are facing conflict, struggles, difficulties in relationship, in work, and in life in general, use the word of God that encourage you and attack. For example, you are facing a difficult situation that you think you can, cannot pass through. But you said, in Christ, all things are possible. If Christ with me, who can against me? I'm coming uh, forward. I'm moving forward. I'm getting my breakthrough. That's how I do it. That's how I do it. Sometimes, some days I wake up, you know, for some, whatever reason, I'm depressed. I feel a little discouraged. I start reciting the word of God so that I can move forward and attack the work of the devil in my mind. Okay. The first one, how to engage, is engage through the word of God. The second one, Paul continue in the, you know, the next verse. And pray in the spirit in, on all occasions with all kind of prayers and requests. He said, pray in all situations that you are facing with all kind of requests. Pray in the spirit. A lot of us only pray when we eat and before we sleep. But Paul said, in all situations, you pray. Because prayer is not simply just, oh God, protect me and bless me. Prayer is also a warfare. When you pray, you activate the angels that God sent to you. For three weeks, Daniel prayed. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Day one, nothing happened. Week one, nothing happened. Week two, nothing happened. Week three, something happened. The angel come. Right? The angel said, I have hurt you from the beginning, but I was fighting the continental angel at that time. Persian angel or something like that. Michael was then. And so you pray. And when you pray, you pray in a, in a struggling uh, mode. You know that you are fighting something. Something is trying to make you unsuccessful. Something is trying to make you depressed. Something is coming down against your family. You pray. Hallelujah. In the next three weeks, starting tomorrow, we're going to pray together. We're going to fast together. Let's do that. For this new year, let's engage the devil. Do not just sit there. If you, you know, somebody said the best, the best uh, defense is offense. Right? Have you heard that? Instead of keep on defending, oh God, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry that all this thing happening and, and I'm, I'm weak, I'm I'm not able, God already gave us the word, and he gave us access through prayer to the power of God. So we need to pray. Amen? So let's together, starting tomorrow for the next three weeks, fast and pray. Choose, this is called Daniel fasting. Choose um, something that you want to give up and use that time that you usually do that activity for prayer and reading the Bible. We can do that together. Amen? Let's pray for the church, pray for your family, pray for your career, pray for uh, the unity and prosperity of your family. 
pray, pray for the protection for your, from your family. Amen? I know that Omicron is not that severe, maybe. I still don't want to get Omicron. Okay? You know, that's why we have flu shot, right? I mean, flu is not going to kill you, but why do people have flu shot? Because you don't want to get it. Let it pass. Somebody else that, that don't want to, you know, that, that say it's okay and, and let them get it. I don't want to get it. And I don't want Omicron if possible. If I get it, I get it, okay? But I try not to get it. So I pray for my protection. God, allow me so that I can do ministry without interruption. I want to be in the church and worshiping you. I don't want this Omicron. All right? So pray. And last but not least, very important, how do you engage? So the first one is by using the word. The second one is by prayer. The third one, Paul tell us in the next verse, in verse 19, pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. One way to engage in the kingdom of darkness is make known the gospel. Okay? How many will remember your, the last time you share the gospel to someone who did not know Jesus? How many remember the last time you share a testimony about what God has done for your life? We need to do that. That is engaging. When you share the mystery of the gospel to the unbeliever, you are going deep into the territory of the kingdom of darkness because you are trying to snatch that person from the control of the devil. That is engaging. Paul tells us, in his mind, this is a battlefield, and in order for you to win and come out victorious, is that you need to engage using the sword, which is the word of God, through your prayer and speak to others about the message of the gospel. Let's do this. Of course, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit because it's very dangerous to go in deep into the enemy territory, but Jesus is going to be with you. Amen? Jesus is going to be with you. He's going to give you power and wisdom on what to say, what to say, to say to the unbeliever, so that they will know Jesus. That's why he said, make known the mystery of the gospel. Pray for me. During your prayer in the next three weeks, pray for those in the front line. And together as a church, let's share the gospel of the good news. Our church in Penol, Penol campus, God allowed to be the frontline church. Many, many students come, and these students, they have yet to know Jesus. There are opportunities for you to witness to these students. I promise you, I will work hard. I will pick them up, become the transportation. I, that's what I did, right? I, become, I called them, I contacted them, and bring them to the church. But once in the church, if you are there, Please help me take care of them. Please help me encourage them, witness to them, invite them for a fellowship so that they know also what you know, the mystery of the great gospel. Why is it mystery? Because someone has to reveal it. It's not just suddenly out of nowhere in the air, all this knowledge about God suddenly go into the head of the unbeliever. It's a mystery because you and I need to bring it out, take it out, so it become plain to these unbelievers that God, Jesus, lost them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So much work, you say. But Dallas Willard says this, grace is not opposed to effort. It is opposed to earning. You and I know we have the salvation by grace, freely given unto us. Amen. We receive salvation without any work. Right? It is grace. But grace, we don't, we don't have to earn our salvation, but we do have to put effort. 
knowing that we are saved. Right? Grace is not opposed to effort. It is opposed to earning because we are saved by grace. But once you are saved, we have to put maximum effort, engage with the enemy so that we do not fall and we do not become a victim. Hallelujah. That's Dallas Willard, one of the great theologians. He said, earning is an attitude, effort is an action. Well, think about it. That is too deep for me to tell right now. All right. Hallelujah. That's it. I hope I encourage you enough so that you are willing to engage with the devil and not just sit there as if nothing is happened because whether you like it or not, the devil tried to shake your life. The devil tried to shake what you believe. He wants to control your life, how you make decisions and take your action. Hallelujah. Let's sing one song while we prepare our heart for the Holy Communion.